I don't know if you like to come to the field or not, but uh, <laughs> I thought it was a good idea to come and get a little bit of mud on our, on our shoes. Um, yesterday, as you remember, I gave you a presentation related to phenotyping. Uh, I talk about different things um, and uh, I gave uh, particular examples of traits that you can focus on and are simple and are uh, cheap to measure uh, and uh, they can give us a lot of information on, on, on materials and, and, and these characterizations can help us a lot to understand better uh, things like rain yield, <laughs> things like lodging, things like uh, the agronomic types that we have in our, in our materials. Uh, as you can see here, we have a pattern on selecting for red canopies, which is something that maybe Richard Richards from Australia will be happy to see. <laughs> um, but anyway, um, I wanted to take the chance to come to the field and then show you some of the traits in, in, in real life with plants, not with a presentation, not with photographs but with, with, with some, some uh, real life. I talked yesterday about, about um, spike uh, fertility. I talk about grain, uh, I talk about grain number per, per, per unit area that is gonna be given by several aspects of the plant. And those aspects of the plant are basically on the, on the components of the, of the spikes, yeah? So we have the spike that is composed by spikelets, yeah? And those spike, uh, spikelets have uh, florets and then grains, you know. So the number of, of these uh, components of the of the spike are going to determine the grains, the grain set or the grain number. Uh, in our breeding programs, the grain size it's already fixed. You do selection for that. Uh, we do selection for that in Simit. I'm not worried about that. Uh, I'm worried about keeping that advance that we have in in, in, in the in the thousand grain weight. But we can increase the grain number without of maintaining that grain size that we already achieved and keep going up as well. So we need to identify uh, genotypes that are useful for that. At the moment, uh, we can find some genotypes that have high thousand kernel weight, but also have grain, high grain number. So those materials, I think it's something that we can target and further develop and further increase in terms of grain number, which is, I think, an objective that we can, we can go for. So you can see differences here in the spikes. I mean, I'm not gonna teach you the differences in between the spikes, it's just to exemplify a trait. So you can have different numbers of uh, spikelets, yeah? And within those spikelets, you can have different number of grains, yeah? And uh, those things uh, have potential uh, to be used for breeding. We have, we are starting a kind of a strategy trying to bring um, potential that Morocco has shown in optimal condition. Morocco is a variety that is extremely susceptible to disease, but uh, maybe with the, with the proper crossing, we can develop some population that can help us to understand uh, the potential of that, yeah? So basically what we do to characterize the spike is to, to count, you know, the structures, yeah, the spikelets. So you can have a range, you know, uh, of, 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 of different number of spikelets and then different number of grains within the spikelets to be from two to four uh, spikelets i think can go from 15 to 20 25 uh, in for irrigated materials uh, so those ranges uh, are, in, are important what we have seen in terms of the components of the spike is that in our in the material the preventing material that you are receiving the ranges are higher so you can have more more structures per unit of or per, or per, per spike than in elite material. Elite material has a good range. I'm not saying it doesn't have a good range, but bringing uh, diversity from other uh, uh, germ plants or gene pools, we can increase those structures. And, and, and so far in the preventing material you are receiving, especially wicked, you have a, very, a bigger range on grain numbers per spike. Yeah. And uh, the other thing that is very important and you can see in these two spikes is the fertility of the spike. These two spikes, I think, have the same number of spikelets, but here you can see this one, I mean, it's not fully extended, but it's already, maybe it's developing or it's already aborted, I don't know yet, but uh, for, for practical purposes, it works. So this is an infertile, an infertile, an infertile, and this one has only one infertile. That gives us, uh, you know, 
information about this spike in terms of spike fertility. So that trait is better in this spike than in this one. And that is really important. Then you have the survival, no? Uh, maybe some of these ones are going to abort during the grain filling period, especially if you have heat. So you can reduce that. But there are vari there is variation of, 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 of the genotypes resisting that or uh, reducing abortion or having more abortion of, 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 of florets during the during the grain filling period. So these traits are important to measure. And what we do in the field uh, in, in prebreeding is going and then counting things. We normally count around five to ten plants per plot and we select the plants uh, randomly within the plot not not only one place uh, mostly in in the most representative areas of the of the plot and then we select those plants and then we count the number of uh, spikelets the number of grains per spikelet uh, and then the number the number of infertile florets and we do that in maturity because we want to know what survives <laughs> until maturity so those traits are very, very crucial to determine the grain uh, capacity of, 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 of a variety, of an advanced line, of a material that you want to select. So that's, that's in relation to the, to the, to the spike uh, fertility. And I think it's something really simple to measure. You don't need advice. You just need your head, your fingers to count, and a notebook. Or you can use an electronic, electronic field book which is very useful, and you can measure those traits. So one question, uh, I mean, any questions related to that? Okay. Is it uh, true that the number of florets uh, in a spikelet is dependent on the environment? If the environment is suitable, the number of the florets mm -hmm. increased, or the, uh, if the environment is not suitable, the number of uh, florets is decreased. As uh, we see that, uh, that uh, the number of uh, a single uh, spike, let me observe uh, five to six yeah. green. Now I forget what was the next. Uh, the uh, how long is Oh, stage? yeah, internet. Thank you, Alison. Um, okay. Uh, there is something that we've been working with in the last. Uh, uh, Francisco, can you maybe bring. It's happening in the first five <coughs> to ten centimeters of the plant. And you can find differences here. I mean, you can argue that this has two tillers, but. But you can see differences in the in the in the in the in the plate of these crown roots or primary roots. Those differences are important. This plant has more anchorage than this one and than this one. Yeah. And this one, I will give one or zero. Hundred percent of the leaves are erect. So this thing, pattern from environment, but I I, I would say.